Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I am sharing a product that has been out for a while, but I haven't really talked about on my channel yet, and that is Thermoweb's Flock Transfer Sheets. I don't know if you've ever tried applying flock powder, but it's kind of like loose glitter maybe a little more messy. So the flock transfer sheets are brilliant because you get the same texture, you get really great vibrant colors, and there's no mess. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you 10 different ways to use these flock transfer sheets. So here are some of the Thermoweb's iCraft Equifoil flock transfer sheets that are available. They have an entire rainbow of colors from brights to pastels to even neons. They have this nice thin paper on the back. It makes it flexible and easy to die cut. And the front is pure flock texture goodness. One of the simplest way that you can use these flock transfer sheets is simply to cut them with a paper trimmer. You can absolutely use a trimmer, any trimmer that you have, to cut the flock. And I love doing this because the flock is on a paper background, so it makes it really easy to cut with scissors or trimmers or even dies, which we'll cover later in the video. For now, I'm just using my Tim Holtz trimmer to cut down some strips at an angle, and then I'm gonna use the Thermoweb Ultra Bond pen to adhere the Waffle Flower Micro Grid down to an A2 piece of white card stock. Then I'm just going to use plain old tape runner behind the flock sheets because they have that paper on the back. You can use any kind of adhesive to adhere them down. You don't need anything special. Tape runner or liquid glue will work just fine. Once that's done, I'm going to flip the whole thing over and just use some nonstick scissors to cut off the excess. And that is just a really easy way to use the flock sheets to create a textured and colorful panel. Flock transfer for sheets die cut beautifully. Like I mentioned, not only using a trimmer is easy with the flock transfer sheets, but they also die cut beautifully. So I'm using the Concord and Ninth plaid card front dies. There are two different types of plaid. There's a thin and a thick. So I cut each of them out of two different colors of flock transfer sheets. In the last section, I used tape runner to adhere the transfer sheets down. Now I'm going to share how you can use liquid glue and it works just fine. The paper is thin, but it's thick enough to withstand liquid glue on the back and use that to adhere the first plaid down to an A2 piece of white cardstock. And then I'm going to use the Ultra Bond pen, which has that nice fine tip to adhere a little bit of liquid glue all around the thin plaid as well. And then just adhere that on top. Since you're going on top of the flock, it's good to have that liquid glue on top the little thin plaid as well. And that's a really easy way to create a textured, beautiful background. Lots of fuzziness and color. Of course, you can just use the flock sheets as is, but you can also have fun applying them in patterns using Thermoweb's Duo Gel stencils. And here, this technique is two for one because you also get to use the flock sheet where the stencil pattern has been removed. Normally I use Pixie Spray with stencils, but I don't want any adhesive on the cardstock. So I am going to use purple tape to hold the corners in place and then Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. The duo means you can use heat or pressure to apply. I'm gonna put a bunch on the stencil pal and just place it down on the stencil. When I peel it off, it is white. It needs to be clear before you can apply the flock. So wait until it completely dries and it's clear. Then you can grab your flock, any color you want. I'm using the neon orange and place that flock with the flock color side facing the clear gel stencil and put it through your die cut machine. And when it comes out, peel it off and you have two cards here. One where the flock has been applied and one where the flock has been removed. And you can use both of these to create really fun card backgrounds. You can even make your flock dimensional by using Thermoweb's double-sided foam sheets. So this is Thermoweb's Decofoil Foam Adhesive. It is a double-sided adhesive foam. I've cut a strip and I'm going to peel off one of the protective layers. I like to peel off the one that's a little tougher to get off first, and then the other side will be really, really simple. I'm gonna place the sticky side of the foam onto a piece of flock, and I'm gonna just press it down until it's just basically stuck there, and then I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine without a die. 
Then I'm going to peel off the other side. So I'm going to peel off the side that is stuck to the foam, not the back side that is going to make it a sticker. Now I have a basically rectangular shaped flock sticker and I can cut out shapes from that flock sticker. So I use some stamp market dies to cut out some leaves. I'm gonna do this process again. Peel off one side and place it the sticky side down on the fuzzy side of your flock sheet. Then run that through your die cut machine to transfer it and then cut out your flower. I used the Stamp Market's Jumbo Layered Lovelies. Here I put a bunch of tape runner on an A2 piece of white cardstock and I'm placing down the Waffle Flower Stitched Floral panel die and I'm actually gonna fill in all the shapes. I wanted this all white on white as my background, but I liked all the texture that those stitched florals have. So I'm just popping them into place on the background that has all that tape runner on it so that it just has the white on white, but all those stitch marks. It just looks like a pretty textured background. Now I'm gonna peel off the backing of these flock stickers that we created. Peel off the sticker there, that's the flower. That's the main flower from Jumbo Layered Lovelies from Stamp Market. And I'm gonna lift up some of the corners and just put the leaves behind the flower there. It would have been good if I could have figured out exactly where I wanted my leaves, but that was really hard for me to do without the flower in place. I guess I could have kept the backing on the flower and just placed the leaves where I wanted it, but I just didn't think of that at the time. So we're going to just peel up some corners and lay some leaves underneath. And that's how you create lots and lots of texture with that flock and dimension with the dimensional foam. And I'm just adding some enamel dots to the center of that flower. And you can see all the fuzziness even in camera. I just love the texture of flock. These flock transfer sheets are so awesome because you can actually add things on top of them, like Thermoweb's Glitter Glitz Gels. Again, I'm using the purple tape with the stencil because I don't want any pixie spray on the flock itself, but I do want some Glitter Glitz Gel to go over that Newton's Nook balloon stencil. So I'm gonna put some on my stencil pal and then gently just transfer it over the stencil. The thing about the flock is you do wanna be a little gentle with it. You can see I'm actually wiping all the glitz right onto the flock. It's not removing it. It's not causing any issues or even removing the color but you do wanna be a little more gentle than you normally would with some 110 pound cardstock. Then I'm just gonna peel off that purple tape and lift up the stencil. And the great thing about glitz is that not only does it add glitter and shine, but it also adds a little bit of dimension too. If you're careful, you can even ink on these flock transfer sheets. For this technique, I'm using a My Favorite Things die, and I'm going to be cutting out the white flock that Thermoweb has. It's called White Latte. So I cut out the rainbow rays from the My Favorite Things die out of the white flock, and I'm going to be using Distress Oxide ink on top. The thing is, you can't do your typical ink blending techniques of circular motion or even back and forth motion. You really need to pounce the ink on top. So I'm just basically tapping the foam on top of that white flock. But you can see that the color transfers beautifully when you do that. You're not wanting to rub it back and forth or in a circular motion because you could really rub away the flock off the paper. So I just like to be a little more gentle with it and just, as I said, pounce or tap the ink from the ink tool onto your flock. So now I'm just gonna use tape runner on the back of these rays and apply it to an A2 piece of white cardstock. And I am still being a little gentle. I notice if I'm too rough with them, say like I scrape my nail against them, you can kind of cause some damage to the flock. But for the most part, they're pretty sturdy. So have some fun adding things like glitz or ink on top and create a rainbow of colors that maybe you don't own. 
If you haven't seen my first embossing folder video, you need to check that out. But for now, let me just share that you can absolutely use embossing folders with flock transfer sheets. So just place a piece of flock inside your embossing folder, just like you would paper. And when it comes out, it is embossed and has the flock texture to it. The cool thing about using flock transfer sheets as opposed to powdered flock is that you can actually stamp right on top of them. I am using the Stamp Market's Wild Stems stamp set and I'm gonna take a few of those stamps and I'm gonna use some scraps from my flock transfer sheets and I'm using peony on top of carnation pink flock and I do have to stamp it multiple times because there's so much texture it's great to have a pressure tool like the stamper secret Debbie tool here to get even pressure I still needed to stamp it maybe two or three times depending on the color that you're working on. Here I'm gonna use Catherine Pooler's Catching Rays on some yellow flock. And again, it just, it does come out beautifully. It just takes a few times of stamping it to get it to really come out. This time I'm going to tone down the color by using some Hero Arts White Unicorn ink. Now with the white ink, you need to really stamp it multiple times. I think maybe I stamped it five or six times, but when it comes out, it is so beautiful because you get that dark halo when you cut it out, but you have the light color on the inside. And I just think that's so pretty to have the flock exterior around the die cuts as well as the stamped image on top. I figured if you could stamp on them, you could also heat emboss on them, but let me show you how easy it is. Just as you would on cardstock, I do like to prep the flock with some anti-static powder tool, but I'm not gonna brush it away like I normally would because I'm afraid of brushing too hard and brushing off the flock. I'm using emboss ink from the stamp market and then I'm pouring gold sparkle embossing powder on top. That is from Wow. And then I'm gonna heat set it. And I loved the way it looked, but I wanted more gold here. So I'm just gonna do it again. I left the stamp in my Misty, so it's in the same exact spot, and I'm just gonna re-stamp it and then re-pour on some embossing powder and then heat set it once again. Now, just like with the stamping, depending on the colors that you use, you may need to do this two or three times. I think I did it a few more times, but check out the dimension that you get too because you're layering the embossing powder on top of itself. Now I have nine backgrounds and some die cut stems, and I just love all the color and texture that you get in these different ways of using the flock. But this is no good to you unless they can be made into cards. So let's quickly turn these backgrounds and die cuts into cards. For this card, I'm gonna use some tape runner on the back of the embossed flock, and I'm going to cut it down to four by five and a quarter so that I can layer it over some citrine cardstock from the stamp mark. Now that we're working on a flock layer here, I'm going to use liquid glue to adhere the stems that are stamped and die cut onto the embossed flock panel because I really want them to stay and I'm afraid that tape runner might just peel right off. But a nice strong liquid glue like Ultra Bond is perfect. I love the sentiments from the stamp markets you're in my thoughts stamp set. So I'm going to use one of those and their coral reef ink and I'm going to use the coordinating die to cut it out. Then I'm going to use some of that Ultra Bond once again behind the little die cut sentiment and adhere it down to the flock embossed panel. And I love how much texture and color. It's just incredible how easy it is to create with this flock. I'm going to use the same sentiment stamp set, only a different sentiment this time, that I care about you. And I'm going to use jade ink to stamp it out on white cardstock and then cut it out with the dies and use the Ultra Bond to adhere it down to my cardstock panel. This way I have a little time to move it around and make sure it's straight. But again, you get all that texture from the flock and such vibrant color as well. This card, I'm going to use some tape runner to adhere the flock rainbow down to some holographic cardstock, and then just use some black ink to use uh, to stamp a sentiment in the corner there. Again, really simple, but lots of texture and color to this card. 
This time I'm using the Stamp Market's Stopping By To Say stamp set, and I'm gonna stamp Thanks in raspberry ink on party pink cardstock. And then I'm gonna layer it on that white cardstock so that I can get a little white matted edge to this sentiment strip. So I'm just gonna cut it down with my trimmer right around the edge of the party pink, and then use some ThermoWeb foam tape on a roll to pop this up. So again, you've got all the dimension from the sentiment and foam, but also that flock has its own little bit of dimension to it, and then tons and tons of texture. So it's just a totally different way to create texture on your cards. And then just add a few enamel dots on that sentiment strip in the center for some accents and shine. If you've seen my latest new and must have crafty supplies video, you know I love this lawn fawn pad. If not, I'll link to it here. But I'm just gonna use some tape runner to put the flock down onto a piece of pattern paper, add some enamel dots on top, and then liquid glue for a little strip of pattern paper at the bottom. For the birthday card, I'm going back to the stamp market stopping by to say uh, stamp set, and I'm going to use some white embossing powder with the happy birthday sentiment, then use some tape runner to adhere the panel down, which has got the flock and the glitz, and then liquid glue to put the sentiment down. You could add some confetti embellishments if you want, but I think this has tons of texture, sparkle, and shine as is. This was the panel we created with the duo gel and the stencil. I'm going to adhere it down with some liquid glue onto some glitter cardstock to add a little extra shine. And then I'm going to create a multicolor stamped sentiment with the stopping by to say hello stamp set from the stamp market. I'm going to adhere that down with tape runner this time because there's plenty of open cardstock. So I don't have to use the liquid glue here, but I just love all the little fuzzy stars in the background. For this card, this was the one we just cut the strips with the trimmer. I am going to use some liquid glue to adhere a black layer of the high hello die set from the stamp market onto the shadow layer which is white cardstock. Put a little dot of adhesive on the black dot that didn't transfer through and then lay the die on top and use a piercer to pop it into place. That's just a really easy way to get it right where it's supposed to be. And then this time I am using liquid adhesive to adhere it down to the cardstock because there is tons of flock that I'm working on top of there. You'll remember that the gel was the one where we got two backgrounds for one. This is the negative background where I peeled the flock off. I'm going to use that with Hero Arts Happy Thanks die and stamp set. So I've cut the happy out of glitter cardstock and I'm going to use liquid glue to adhere that down and then liquid glue to adhere the birthday stamped sub sentiment down as well. If you have ThermoWeb's flock transfer sheets in your stash, I hope this video inspired you to pull them out and try some of these techniques. If you haven't tried them yet, I definitely recommend giving them a try. If you prefer foil to flock, I have plenty of videos for you to check out over here. As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Probably still around. No, let me show you. Careful with the... Mm, where it's been, mm, it's way too many words. <laughs> I hope this video, if you have, mm, mm, it's more humming.